My name is Rebecca Jumin. Uh, I manage the WWF Malaysia's Sulu Sulawesi Marine Ecoregion Program. Um, one of our project sites is uh, Sempurna Priority Conservation Area, which is located in the southeast corner of Sabah. It is one of the top five places in the world for fish biodiversity richness and among the top four coral species richness. Sempurna is a top scuba diving destination and supports more than 80,000 local inhabitants with rich fisheries. Overfishing is one of the biggest threat to our oceans. Throughout the world, including Malaysia, fish populations are declining. Tuna are one of the top predators in the sea and a flagship species for fisheries management and conservation. However, due to their popularity, uh, their population is also declining throughout the world. WWF Malaysia aims to help protect Sampurna's important biodiversity through sustainable tourism and sustainable fisheries management. On the small island of Mabul, the centre of the scuba industry, there is also a community of traditional tuna fishermen. We feel that these fishermen have the potential to easily transform their practices into a fully sustainable fishery. Through this process, they can ensure the longevity of their fishery, the ecosystem and their livelihoods. They also have the potential to demonstrate how fisheries can be sustainably managed in Malaysia and become one of the first sustainable tuna fisheries in the world with potential for certification. My name is Monique Sumampau. I'm the Sempurna Project Leader, WWF Malaysia, and the Deputy Manager of Sulu Sulawesi Marine Ecoregion. So in Sempurna area, there are some fishermen stays in Mabul Island here. And the area where they do catch tuna is in west coast of Sipadan Island. Some of the big fishermen has some of a payau there, in here where they can catch tuna here and they bring the fish to Mabul Island first sell it to the buyer number one and from buyer number one they go to Sempurna town to sell it to the buyer number two and the buyer number two goes to Lahadatu to Kuna to KK to Tawau and probably exporting out of Malaysia As we can see that at the back is um, the Sipadan Island. So the paya is actually is located uh, nearby, but it's located outside the proposed marine park area. The locally named paya are fish aggregation devices which help attract pelagic fish. The fishermen wrap their bait and a single large baited hook around stones to ensure that the bait drops directly to deep water where the adult tuna patrol. They are not selecting the, the location where they want to settle or where they, where they want to put the payau. So because they because there's fish all over the sea, so they just put it anywhere they they, they want to settle it. And underneath that payau, they have a palm leaf, which they call it habong. So they put it habong because this habong will attract the small 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 fish to to come to that area, and then the bigger fish will come and and to eat this small small fish. So um, after they settle the payau at on the sea with everything complete, so for the recent one that they have installed for about 18, 18 payaus, within eight days they managed to harvest roughly 16 tons of tuna.
back to the 70s when when Pachi is still um, doing a fishing activity. They used to use a smaller boat, which is um, as small as like a palm boat, and to to do this tuna fishing. So that boat can fit for three fishermen at one time, and the most they can harvest is almost 60 tails of fish. There are six fishermen on the Jong Kong now and they have been on the sea for three nights already and their caught is about 20 tails of fish and roughly about 10 tails are the albaco and the, the, the rest of the 10 are the tuna, the yellowfin tuna. And these fishermen, they have been fishermen for quite a long time since their father's generation and they said that Fishing or catching tuna, this um, involving in this tuna fisheries is the way they live. This is how they get the income for, for the family. And they hope that if in the future time, if they have their own children, they wish that their children will be in part of the tuna fisheries as well. Because um, other than that, they, they, feel that, they feel that this is what they can do. And if they have another choice to, to, to do some, something else, they still prefer to do this um, tuna fisheries. These are the fishermen and they have been on the sea for four days already and today is their last day. They have a total catch of about 400 kilos and it's about estimate about 30 tails of fish. Uh, so this is Pala. So he used to be a fisherman back in 2009 and now he is one of the buyers in Mabul that buying the tuna fish from the fisherman. So in terms of the quantity of the catch of tuna fish comparing when he was still a fisherman and now becoming a buyer, uh, there is an increase of quantity. Now we are at the tuna fishing landing area at Sempona town. So now we can see that the fisherman is unloading the tuna fish from the boat from Mabul and they are dealing with um, the buyers from, from Sempona and they, they are doing the uh, weighing of the fish before they start um, selling it to the buyers. Tidak sama setiap hari-hari. Mm. Biasanya macam pacik ini ada jaga orang juga kan. Mm. Dalam mungkin 10 orang. Buat-buat seribut yang kecil. Mm. Saja stok ikan itu dalam 2 hari, 3 hari. Mm. Lepas itu dalam 3 hari memang kita sudah sudah tahulah uh, barang uh. tidak boleh disimpan hingga 4 hari. Yeah. Uh. So dia punya kualiti akan akan turun. Mm. Akan berubah wajah. Yeah, yeah. Jadi sampai di custom. Tengok warna lain dia bilang, ha ini rejek. Ya, tidak Jadi maksudnya. dia punya nilai ataupun harga memang jatuh teruk lah. Oh. Ya, Kalau kita gunakan pukat, eh, mungkin 10 tahun akan datang, 15 tahun, dia akan berlaku kekurangan ikan. Hmm. Uh, seperti mana yang kita tahu, selama 30 tahun kami menjadi nilaian, kita menggunakan kaedah mancing pakai tangan. Hmm. Nah, itu tidak kesan apa-apa. Hmm. Uh, bermakna, Ikan tu dari masa ke, ke masa ada peningkatan. Dia selalu membanyak di payau. Hmm. Jadi kalau kita menggunakan pukat, saya rasa ini memang patut dikurangkan lah. According to Pachi Abu, the 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 differences between sizes and the quantity since he started to 20 years ago, there's not much different in terms of. Um, sizes, but um, the catches of the in terms of sizes is actually depending on the season. So us usually, um, starting uh, month of December until February, there's more bigger fishes like um, the yellowfin tuna as well as the albaco. But um, for a smaller smaller tuna like the skipjack, it's actually caught all year through.
according to Paji Abu, he will think that um, the catches in future time will be more because of the increase of the number of payau. Because the more the payau um, settle on the, on the sea, the more fishes that they will get. With the increase of the number of payau and also the way, the method that the fishermen using to catch a fish by using the hook and line will definitely help the, 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 stock, the, the tuna fish stock in the sea for future time. So they will get more fishes. The fish that uh, Pachi Abu bought from the um, Mabul buyers will be sent to KK, Lahadatu, Sandakan and as well as Tawau. But for those tuna that um, weigh more than 20 kilos, will be exported out to Philippines. We selected Mabul because it's got characteristics that we believe we could develop a successful model on how to transform a fisheries from a sustainable one to a, a very sustainable one on the long term. Because uh, first of all, it is a small scale artisanal fisheries. We are talking here of about 200 boats and maybe about 400 to 600 fishermen. They are using a very sustainable fishing technique, which is the hand line. They are catching the very big ones and avoiding the small ones and with very little bycatch. And uh, if we work with them in terms of improving their catching techniques, improving the gears that they use, giving them the technology that is uh, available now in the market that helps them you know, do uh, sustainable fishing, documenting all the fisheries in that area with, with WWF, then we have a good chance that this fishery will develop into a well-managed system. As we have it now, under the business as usual scenario here, uh, this fish will not last long. We need to take some drastic steps, some directed focus on improving the way they handle the fish, improving the way they manage the fisheries. If we introduce the concept of buying by the quality of the fish, then there, there will be an immediate increase in the value. And increasing the value of fish means increasing the income of the fishermen without necessarily catching more fish. So that's, that's our approach here. And if we can uh, put this system in place in the next two or three years, then we will see a fisheries that is gradually developing and going into the path of sustainability. We're very excited about this project. The Mabul tuna fishery has a real opportunity to become the first sustainable fishery in Malaysia. Our next steps are to pursue Marine Stewardship Council certification for this fishery. With the certification, we know that the fishery does not damage the ecosystem, supports and maintains a healthy fish stock, and is well managed. We intend to continue to work with the fishermen on Mabul to help them improve their practices and their management of the fishery. We'll work with the Department of Fisheries Sabah to help them to work with the fishermen and to learn what it takes to get MSC uh, certification and we need to find buyers who value sustainability and are willing to support the fishermen and the Department of Fisheries as they go through this process. And with a little bit of hard work, we hope to have the first MSC certified fishery in Malaysia in, within the next couple of years.